Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of 2020 of The Grid. Glad to have you guys here. I'm Scott Kelby and I am joined by two auspicious, audacious men. To my left, our very special guest in the studio is photographer and author, Mark Silver, his third time on The Grid. Welcome back. Scott, I'm so good to have you here. to be here, yeah. Good to have you here. Yeah, good to have you and here. And it's a perfect topic for, for today, but we also have with us, as always, the co-host of the show, the real rocket man, Mr. Eric Kuna. Welcome back. Hey, Scott. How's it going? Man, you got to bring a, you got to bring some more energy than that. We're supposed to sing Rocket Man. Yeah, we're supposed to sing Kuna Man. Well, we've had such a break here. It's been like weeks of not doing. Yeah, it's I'm not weird. Used to doing this. I know it's kind of crazy. And it's a whole new decade. It whole is a whole decade. new decade. It is. Let's talk about our topic today. Yeah. So our topic today is how to become more creative in 2020. This is something that people struggle with a lot, and I, I saw a lot of comments. Mm -hmm. towards the end of the year of people saying, you know, I really want to do new things next year. I want to think in new ways and I want to break out of my box of doing the same thing. I think it's very easy for photographers to get into a rut of shooting the same thing. It really, you know, you plagiarize yourself. That's yeah. what we call it. <laughs> it is. You plagiarize yourself. How many times do I need to take this sunburst, you know? It's, it's easy, but you do it over and over again. You got to do yeah. something different, right? And that's what we're Absolutely. going to talk about. Absolutely. But, but while we have some ideas that I hope will help you to be more creative in 2020, we also want to hear your comments. Totally. So if you guys that are watching, let us know the things that you've got, yeah, some ideas that you, that you have yeah. that you do to kind of get your juices going. Your mojo working. Your mojo working. Mark, mm -hmm. start us off, buddy. What do you, give me some ideas. Boy, I, no runway here. Okay, okay I'll, 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 I'll glide you into it. Please. Here we go. Tower. Okay, here we are. <laughs> That was a nice takeoff. Thank you. You know how to be more creative. First of all, you got to decide that you are going to be more creative. It sounds so simple, but you know, a lot of us just keep going. We were saying that, you know, keep going in the same rut, maybe plagiarizing yourself, but there's a couple of key tools that I like to fall back on. And one of them is visualization. This is something that Ansel Adams said, the whole key to a photograph is that you visualize it before you press the shutter. But that turns, it turns out that visualization follows any art form. You know, when you're writing a song and, and, or you're, you're arranging a song, you first visualize it, how you, what instruments you wanna have come in, when and so forth. Well, you can visualize your, your whole uh, genre. You can decide, just like Eric, you know, you're shooting what you have to shoot for the client, but then you're also visualizing and putting in those other shots that you want to get that adds that element of creativity. And I think the first thing we can all do is just make sure that we don't just go out and press shutters. We're, we're, we're putting the picture there ahead of time. We're thinking, well, what do I really want to do that will turn this on its head? That you make know, it I look have a different. problem with that, though. Go for it. My problem with that is that is I have that problem. Of like I get there, what do I, visualize? I, I can visualize a very vague thing. I don't see a very clear picture. Like I get there and I'm like, oh, I kind of know what I want to do. But you and Eric seem to have a very well-defined, this is what I want to do to change this. But my, my issue is I, I, I don't have that. It, mine's very foggy. The, mm. the visualization ability. Yeah, my yeah. visualization and, ability, I think, is must be lower than your average person. Well, well there's, there's some yeah. remedies for that, believe it or not. Yeah. You know, one of them, and I'm sure you already do this, but is to look at other art and to see how, does, how did that artist do it? I don't mean just photography. Right. Painting, classical painting. This is something Joey L., for instance, really dove into the classical artists. And he looked at how they framed, you know, I mean, a, a painting is a frame, right? right? So how did they use that frame? How did they light their subjects? How, how was the sky lit? You know, these really moody clouds and that sort of thing. So then you've kind of got that in your visual library. And when you go out, you can start sort of plugging those in and see if they fit. But you probably do a lot of that already. Right? I, I do one part of it, and it was actually one of the things I was that I was going to talk about today was that when people get stuck in a creative rut, what I do is I go look at other photographers' work. Now yeah. I don't yeah, go look definitely. at painters' work. I do. Yeah. I look at photographers' work. But for one thing, I find it very inspiring. Yes. Like when I go look at, I, I find like if I'm in a rut with my photography, 
going and looking at other great photos makes me want to photograph. Exactly. So I, I think it's it's I think it's inspirational to yeah. look at other, but also it does give you ideas. But honestly, Mark, I struggle with the the initial idea thing. Yeah. Like you know, like I, this is one of the reasons why I, I'm always so impressed with Joe McNally because Joe will come up with a whole idea from the very beginning. He'll say, all right, I want to go in the desert and I want some elephants and I want a showgirl. And he comes up with this, this whole thing. And then he's got Linda Mastro, who is an amazing uh, partner with him, who yeah. goes and makes all these things happen. But, but it's, it grew from Joe's idea. I sit there and go, I see Joe's idea and go, man, that's really great. That I wish, super why, cool. why can't I come up with anything like that? I literally can't. And so my, mm. my, my thing has become, my wife is really creative. So we work together a lot as a team, yeah. like as a team together, we, we do a lot of projects and she's really great at it. She goes to the scene and she's like, let's do this. Let's do that. I got a story. And I'm like, really? Cause I mean, I, it frees me just to, to, to focus on yeah, the well, camera and the light. Maybe she's your visualizer. I think she is my you, visualizer. Cause I'm telling you, I'm just not any that's good at a, it. That's a, that's a good thing. I mean, you just yeah. gotta kind of find that thing. if, if you don't. Um, but another tool like in that sense is cause I'm looking down my list is, um, do you a lot of times like when, when you're actually going to plan or going to kind of pre visualize, just take some time to like, just, just sit and think or take a walk and think yeah. and, and actually just take some time to like clear your mind of the other stuff and say, what am I trying to communicate here? What am I trying to do? Things that I can, you know, like, yeah, I don't do that no, either. No, I, I don't do a lot of things that you're supposed to do. That's a tool that I use a lot of times to just kind of just taken and sometimes you can get you can get quicker at this where you can if i got 15 minutes of downtime i can go oh i'm just gonna think of an, an that's how it came to me like look at why can't we get a, an exposed ignition shot like why can't we get those and then i started going well you know the, it would be cool to see that it would be cool to see that and then i'm like okay well and that goes to another one that i think is a big one with creativity that i get to later but I think just having equipping yourself with that time to kind of like just sit down and think, because if you're not like uber creative, like where your wife, where she can just walk into a scene and go do this, do this, you have to overcompensate. You have to put those by tools putting in. in those tools. Yeah. It's well, like you, you have to overcompensate. And you were telling me you do that with music, essentially. You know, you take the voice track and then. Oh, you, yeah. It's you, easier for me with music. <laughs> OK, so you're doing it with music. Now you just need to translate that over to photography because you're doing it where you're you're putting those layers of instruments in there by, you have to have some visualization for that, right? Well, I do a lot of listening. Okay. So when it comes to music, uh, you know, let's say I'm, cause one of the things we were talking earlier yeah. was I, I have a, a small studio at my house and I try to recreate 60, uh, 70s and 80s classic rock songs, but I want them to sound like the real thing. I don't yeah. want them to sound like a karaoke version. So I go to YouTube, I pull down the actual vocals and then I play all the instruments. But I, I listen to the original again and again, like I'm driving in my car and I keep listening to how it's done. But for some reason, when it comes to photography, I know I could look at somebody else's photo and maybe that's what my thing is. Maybe the reason why I keep, I don't write a lot of original songs and instead I'm doing these under Other covers songs. Yeah. is because I can look at what somebody else did and recreate it. Yeah. Like I could look at Joe McNally's thing and go, oh yeah, I should get some, I should go to the desert. I should get some <laughs> elephants, but I can't think. Right. My problem is it's a different problem than with music. Yeah. With music, I have almost, here's the sheet of music and then I'm going to recreate it. My problem is, is when I'm stuck and looking at an empty sheet of music, I don't know what to do. Same thing with photography. I, I, I don't have a roadmap and so, and so that's why I only had one thing on my list to talk about mm -hmm. for this for this how to be more creative, which I was, I was going to lean on Mark and Eric because I know they have a lot of them. But it is I do I struggle with coming up with a great idea. Yeah. Hmm. And now w once somebody else has the idea, I can add like pieces to it, you know, but but like in other words, if someone came to me like I was. Did you see the movie with Elton John, the Elton John movie Rocket Man? Yeah, Rocket Man. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Well. I, I, when, when Bernie Taupin, did you see Bernie Taupin was on the Golden Globes? Yeah, yeah. I've never seen Bernie yeah, Taupin. He came out, <laughs> the whole place gave him a standing yeah. ovation. I mean, Elton John's there and he's yeah, obviously yeah. a legend, 
But Bernie, Bernie Taupin. Bernie is the guy behind the whole when thing. When you see that movie, you realize yeah. how incredibly important. But going <laughs> to the movie. Cool. Uh, After in, seeing the movie to see that, yeah. that happen. Yeah. So in the movie, Bernie Taupin writes these incredible lyrics, yeah. like to Goodbye Olympic Road, and he gives them to Elton. And, and Elton, Elton put the music And Elton to puts it. the music to yeah. it. But the, the lyrics are written. I mean, when Elton sits down, he sees, when are you going to come down? When are you going to land? Yeah. You know, he's Those got... Incredible lyrics. Incredible lyrics. And he, he was, it, they were a magical pairing yeah. because he could come up with the chords. So picture me without Bernie Taupin. Well, okay. <laughs> that's where, it's just that's me sitting at the piano. That's what yeah. you're saying is like, at those moments, if you know that, you've got to play to that, right? And that's where you have to like put people into your lives that will like, like we're talking about with your wife. I mean, that's a good tool. That's a good tool to equip yourself with is to have people that you can team up with in your lives. If you know, I'm good at execution. I am good at taking a vision and making it come alive. Yeah, I can do that part. Then just team up with people, and that's what, that's that's what, what Elton I've done. John, yeah. he wasn't a writer, yeah. but he could, it's once he got the words, he could make it into this beautiful song, right? Yeah. So you gotta just team okay, up with Okay, well that's, then that's I'm, I'm happy the I've teamed up with Calibra because yeah. she, she has such great vision. I mean, that's one thing so, you can do. It's so effortless for her and it's so hard for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just at lunch. I, I, I got 14 things there. Oh can, I, can I read something out of this? Book? Yes, Mark's this, going to read yeah, yeah. something. Mark will just and happen, now just happen to have this book. And now a dramatic reading. But this book might book. help, Scott. Listen I, to this. This is from Pablo Picasso. Apparently, this is now just a therapy session for me. It is. We're, we're focused on <laughs> okay, you, Scott. We're focused on Scott today. Right. Okay, so listen to this. This this could help, and this could give you a, a tool here. He says the artist is a receptacle for emotions that come from all over the place from the sky, from the earth, from a scrap of paper, from a passing shape, from a spider's web. Pablo Picasso. And if you look at how I, there's actually an incredible documentary book by David Dun Douglas Duncan, who was a war photographer who spent 25 years photographing Picasso. And you can actually see his inspirational process. So what he's saying there is exactly what he does. He looks and something triggers. And all of a sudden, he takes that one thing and runs with it. But I'll give you another tool to add to it. I could use another one. <laughs> okay, so we can add, we can combine these tools because there's okay. you know there's various creative tools that you use together, just like yeah. with Photoshop, Lightroom. So Brian Wilson, I just at the end of reading his autobiography, incredible genius, had to overcome all sorts of barriers. But one of the things he did- when hey, He's not a photographer. He's the, from the Beach Boys, Brian Wilson, right? That's right, that, okay. that yeah. Brian Wilson. Yes, Good Vibrations. The good Vibrations is Brian yeah. Wilson. Pet sounds. But one of the things he did when he was a teenager is he would listen to songs like Be My Baby, Phil Spector, he was just, this is the song I love. He listened to it and he did what you do. He deconstructed it. And then he went back and taught his brothers how to sing those harmonies. Be My Baby wasn't one of their hit songs, but they used that same fundamental to then build other songs with. Mm -hmm. So I think, giving, going back to that point of looking at other photographers, looking at art, getting that inspiration, write those little flashes down. And then when you go out on your next photo shoot, try out some of those things. Try them out just like you do with yep. the guitar. Absolutely. Right? I don't have a photo shoot till tomorrow. Okay, well. <laughs> Right now I'm going to have to try it out. Right after this, we can go out and do some shout All right. There you go. Hey, when we come back, uh, we're going to do some shout outs. We've got lots of people tuning in from all over today. And awesome. uh, we've, we've got some more ideas. I'm, I actually have the second half of my idea. So, woo! Woo-hoo! So, uh, that's coming up. Uh, stick around. We'll be right back.